Okay, okay. So as we wait for Harris, we will get this going. I hope Nori's okay. I'm actually a bit. Concerned. I know, I know. I'm just hoping he uh, forgot, <laughs> you know, like, you yeah, know, yeah. not to be mean, but I'm hoping it's something like silly like that, that he's just like, oh, time change or something, you know? Yeah, I agree. Okay, perfect. Well, with barring that, you know, and, and without knowing, we're just going to jump in. So recording started. So thanks guys for putting up with a little bit of delay uh, as we get uh, grounded. So we're just going to go through the, the agenda as always. So welcome and check in. Um, and then we'll do some announcements. I don't think there's any announcements yet that I have, but uh, we'll open it to the floor and then we'll go through the uh, the agenda. So thanks, everybody. You know, this is meeting number four, I believe. So I think we're all ready for a Christmas break after this. Uh, well, a holiday break, whatever it is that you celebrate. Um, so I think we'll just go around and do a quick check in. Um, so let's start with uh, Matthias. Yeah, so um, it was great. Uh, very busy. Um, sorry, do we want to uh, jump into uh what so, i was working on as well nope so we'll just do the quick check-in now and then we'll okay. go to we'll go through the agenda as it's laid out just to keep with the, the history uh i'm doing great great to see you all <laughs> perfect so we'll go to steven next yeah i'm doing fine a bit disoriented about this but <laughs> but fine yeah so that's all I have to say, really. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, Kenrick, how are you doing today? Uh, I'm doing great. Yep. Uh, looking forward to the holidays. Okay. Perfect. Tivo? Uh, I already like the holidays we're having and this meeting. I hope we get some some actions uh, announced and added to the, our holiday plans. <laughs> <laughs> oh, perfect. More work over the holidays, just what we all need. Uh, Allison, please. I am doing great. Happy to be here. And then I'm going to get ready to uh, celebrate the holidays. Sweet. And warm. Harris. <laughs> I remember your last name. Harris, please. Sorry. <laughs> Good all the time. No problem. Oh, no. Definitely uh, happy to be here. Definitely thinking of uh, having a couple of days off is going to be really nice. Uh, but I'm also encouraged to, to learn more stuff and, uh, you know, read some books and uh, get, get more more set for the future here. So, but excited to have this discussion and uh, collaborate with all of you. So glad to be here. Great. Perfect. Okay, so then the next thing on the agenda that we have is the, uh, so announcements. I don't have any announcements um, from the admin team at this time. Uh, does anyone else have any announcements that they want to share with the group? Uh, yes. Okay, mm. Tino. Uh, in the weekends, there was uh, in one swarm session, we got some people together and thought about like how to map the journey and how to ask these questions. So this was the document what was circled around from the beginning. So I shall uh, put on the chat a, a auto link of that workshop and then a Google form, which uh, I would like people to understand that how much value it could bring and answering these kinds of questions. And from Circle members, it would be nice to also um, share it on your network and with your people and even answer yourself because you're very unique people to actually tell how did you get into Cardano, uh, how it's all started, what you have been doing and what you're looking for to do. Okay, perfect. Um, can you uh, just at, send, shoot me a link wherever that is, uh, wherever you say that, and then I'll just include it in the notes so people can go back and access it. Thanks, Tivo. Um, other questions or other announcements? Sorry. Um, okay. No, hearing none. Okay, so for the agenda, we're going to go. Does anyone? Um, does everyone have the agenda open or do you want me to share the screen? I've got it open. Get it open. I okay. I've, I've got I it have open. it open. 
Okay, great. So if you guys have it open, is there is everybody okay with the order that it's in, or is there anything that people need uh, added? I think the circle stands up should go after going round the group. Okay. Perfect. So I do go around the group first, and then the yep. circle stands up. Yep. Sure. Apart move. from that, it's fine. Okay, great. I'll just come over this here. <clears throat> Okay, great. So let's go uh, around the group and we're going to go in the, the same order. So I'm going to be taking notes here um, as, as always. So we'll start with Matthias. Uh, so the same questions, what did you work on last meeting, mm -hmm. what next meeting and anything blocking you? All right. So I identified a problem with defamation and misrepresentation of facts on various platforms, including IdeaScale. So um, I met with the Ambassador Guild, the Cardano Foundation, and then I think it was on Monday with Harrison Kendrick uh, on this topic. And um, what I'll be working on next is to continue the conversation and take action, ideally. And uh, if that can be maybe next week, that would be great <laughs> if that works with everyone's schedule, um, but no blockers. Okay, perfect. Uh, Steven? Yeah, I'm, I'm, the bulk of my work was on uh, trying to gather feedback for the community governance oversight proposal. And that led to doing an anti-fragile success criteria after town hall presentation where I got some feedback gathered. Um, that was quite successful. It was quite, uh, this is quite a lot of interest and debate. Um, and I'm starting to capture the community advisor feedback on community governance oversight as well, which again is quite an interesting process. I've got um, I can post a link in chat for that, but also it can be documented. Um, I don't have any blockages. Um, no, so that's what I've worked on. I, mean, I don't have any blockages going forward. Okay, great. Uh, so Kenrick, please. Uh, yes, so um, had a good week. I started diving into being more active on the uh, community advisor boards. Um, it's a lot to keep up with, especially on the Telegram. Uh, there's a lot of ideas circulating around about the need to improve the process. And um, I believe it's Lorenz, I may have the name wrong, uh, posted a very helpful Google Doc where that community is gathering ideas. And my plan is to host an after town hall meeting on the 5th of January when we get back from break. And, and I think that document will kind of frame uh, the discussion. And I'm not sure yet. And, you know, uh, and, and that'll be kind of, I think framing the discussion will be sort of the first step and then we'll go to recommendations and then also, you know, there's no blockers, but I anticipate having to learn more about the processes of actually making some changes. Perfect. Uh, TiVo. Um, so the most important for me was the form, uh, what I just announced. So creating that, getting people, uh, second interesting event was uh, uh, actually prepared uh, how to get Cardano technology adopted discussion in Swarm session and a lot of prominent people gave their feedback and brought uh, like how, how the Linux foundation started, how the, uh, what was that, Eclipse foundation, which so both are open source and at their time were like the edge yeah, like the, the edge technology. So now we are in the Gardano stage and how do we get this started? Uh, I posted the link on the chat. And then last week um, with Steven, Allison, we looked more into of how do we get these, how do we, uh, what is that, circle sponsored proposals. So how do we go on there? What are the requirements uh, to, to find the consensus and which what do we support and what we sponsor and what we don't. A couple of uh, school workshops um, realized that 
the, these kinds of assessments are um, they are getting better compared to previous ones, but there is a lot of gaming now to be seen that people observe a lot, uh, and but they don't assess. And you know, we have to start thinking, okay, how do we now bring out quality assessments? And of course, we have the veteran committee advisor stage, which will help with that. But I think we are going to find ourselves uh, in problem if we allow this kind of um, um, easy community advising uh, to continue because it will just generate more and more work and it will not evolve us if, if you are not able to somehow educate the assessors themselves and make them also want to improve the ideas and themselves. Mm, no problems so far and, uh, and by, by the next uh, weekend Gonna, uh, I want to have that uh, user journey for uh, what this uh, form, what I announced before, the, like from that data, create a user uh, guide or user journey of how do we use text, what kind of uh, tech we use and uh, what kind of activities we use uh, are part of, what do we know, what exists and, and finally, what do we want to see, ask, uh, and, and be part of. Great, great. Oh. Uh, and of course, idea fest. That was great. Mm, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I forgot about that too, actually. Even though I was there. <laughs> okay, so thank you, Tito. Uh, Allison, please. Yeah, from the circle perspective, the biggest thing I've been focused on is this whole office hours concept. Um, which has gone really well after town hall. My attempt to reach out to the Eastern half of the world, not, not so well. Um, although I did have one person show up this week um, and give me some interesting feedback. I'm trying to get more focused on what it is that I'm, I even want to accomplish. And I think where I'm, where I'm going is I'm trying to reach the people who are not covered by the rest of you guys um, because you know, it, it, all of us hold, eight, well, almost all of us, Ocho does not hold any ADA if you come across him and he's very loud about it, which I, is baffling, but anyway. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, I'm not on mute, I forgot. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, I forgot this is being recorded. <laughs> but anyway, I, I, he's, you know, anyway, the, the general, uh, anyone I would talk to is holding ADA, but what I'm what I'm hoping to do because one of the, some of the feedback that I've gotten, just pause there. Hi Nori, or, is everything okay? Hello Nori, I'm so sorry. I got the time zone mixed up again, and I thought it started in half an hour, and then I looked. <laughs> I'm like, oh crap. It's okay. So we were just, yeah, we're, yeah, we're just so, going around. Yeah. So Allison, continue, please. Um. Yeah, so one piece of feedback that I did get was that Catalyst feels like a popularity contest and that the people who are on the inside then just benefit from um, whatever they're doing. I, I don't really know how you avoid that, except that I'm really trying hard to reach the people who are quote unquote, not on the inside. And I've, mm -hmm. I've been struggling with that. Um, so I have some ideas and what I want to work on is a couple of things, setting up better infrastructure, because one of the issues I'm having is a centralized place to direct people to who are interested, but you know, want to just follow what's going on. And I've been directing people to my personal Twitter account, which is great. I'm picking up followers, but that's not really what I want to do. I want to create an infrastructure that can be passed on to the next person. So the discussions about the website and now having the Catalyst Circle email um, is all really good. And I'm also um, trying to create a core support group um, that could provide continuity and continue to support whoever's, whoever comes after me, um, since there's not a natural community of, of ADA holders already. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna keep working on those, those in those areas. I'm not gonna do any office hours though until January. Um, 
what is blocking me and what I need help with? A couple of things. Just again, the basic infrastructure, I think we're getting there and I'm not sure how this will work, but if it's possible to get access to a Meetup account or a Zoom account, those would both be two super useful tools. Um, but also some feedback that I got is that where the general ADA holders hang out is on Reddit. And I'm, I don't have a Reddit account. I've been very nervous about wading into that community. So question to this group is, is anybody active on Reddit? And if so, maybe we could have a brief conversation offline. If not, I might just, you know, get up my courage and head there I myself. Use, I use Reddit. I wouldn't call myself active, but I have colleagues that really like it. And, and my son actually is a very active user of it for his own newsfeed. Um, so I've heard good things about it and I've gotten good things from it, but I'm not super active on it. <clears throat> We're happy to help out. I also use Reddit and there are some things you can't just jump in and start posting. There's things you have to do. So happy to chat about those because it will take time to set up a, a Reddit presence and be able to post and ah. have a conversation that you can't just do it. They've got a lot of anti spam kind of, you have to prove a little bit of reputation before you're able to join the conversation. Uh, which makes sense. I've already been kicked out of the general Cardano telegram channel. It's my first act. Of Catalyst Circle member. <laughs> Excellent. You're, I, 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 well, uh, yeah. <laughs> that's a good point if you started a general ada holder reps account and then built up that reputation so that you can post and have those conversations that can be passed on so somebody doesn't have to start from scratch oh, oh that's, that's a, a great, great idea. idea do it with the ada holders email yes brilliant okay I'll, I'll do that so i'll take that as an action item for january okay yeah. it, it, it sounds has, sorry but qa Dow had a reddit account as well and to that went through the same experience had to take a build up some reputation to to actually post on the Cardano Foundation, which seems to be moderated a lot by, sorry, the Cardano Forum on Reddit, which seems to be moderated a lot by the Cardano Foundation. Is that right, Matthias? I believe. Um, good question. Because I know Daniel does a lot of moderations as well, so IOG. But um, I mean, the Cardano mm -hmm. Foundation has a moderation arm where uh, not Cardano Foundation employees, but um, ambassadors moderate yes so that that would be correct the, uh, but, this is the, the cardano forum on reddit is different than the general forum right the, uh, the cardano forum yes yeah, there's also there's also a cardano forum on a forum software somewhere discourse. Um, yes. okay. as well yeah discourse that's yeah. It. Yeah. Mm. yeah well anyway uh it sounds like you might I really want to know what you did to be kicked out because I, like I said, uh, I saw some deformation and I was like, yeah, it's fine. We just leave it there. So may maybe if we can uh, next week have a discussion around moderation in general uh, would be great to have you in that discussion as well. All I did was post my office hours. There was, it was not very, not very exciting. <laughs> that and predicted hmm. the price would go up 10 X. That is a joke. Oh. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, perfect. Is that it, it Allison? That's yeah, that's it, that's it. Okay. Perfect. So I, I, I do, I do like that idea, uh, Mateus, of maybe calling out general moderation. Like, you know, how, how do we handle that? Uh, how is that handled moving forward? Um, not only within idea scale, but maybe outside of that. Um, so that, that might be a deeper discussion. It would be great to include Danny when he's back from his, his break as well. Um, because he's he's very hands on with a lot of those things, um, but we should we should be looking at it, uh, at that and addressing uh, your concerns again, Mateus, as well as you know why are Cattle Circle members getting blocked from things? Uh, you know we need to figure that out as well. Yeah, I mean, in fairness, there would have been no. It was a bot that did it, I'm sure, and there would have been no way to know who I actually was. I think it just looked like I was spamming the channel with an invitation to something. Ah, gotcha. Perfect. Thanks. Yeah, I think the first uh, link I sent on Telegram also banned me, and I was like, mm, okay, I'm going to be out. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, uh, Harris, please. I keep calling you Warren. Great. Sorry. Yeah, so it's certainly been, been very busy. We've been doing uh, a lot of planning at, at IOG in terms of sort of uh, upcoming uh, events uh, and things. And, and you know, we're uh, working very diligently on. on 
plans to try to hand kind of the uh, custodianship of, of Cardano uh, to the community. And then that's going to be a different part. So certainly I'm, I'm caring a lot about uh, how we do that transition for Catalyst specifically. Uh, there's others on the protocol level and, and other things. So there's a lot of really great deep discussion and we're excited to bring a lot of that stuff forward, uh, probably at the beginning of the year. Uh, so we've had some reviews and have had opportunities to uh, deliberate on a number of those, those topics and we'll be, we'll be sharing I think some of the details have been shared, but we'll we'll be sharing a lot more coming up. Um, one one interesting thing is you know we we want to improve participation as much as possible. Uh, I think the approximate numbers are about ten percent of participation of of wallets actually actively voting, and that that number we feel is low. Uh, one of the the deeper pieces of of how to engage more people is through uh, delegation. Uh, as, as a possible mechanism, and so that's something we've been spending a lot of lot of time on, um, and, and that, that starts to enter a lot of lot of different areas. Um, one cool idea that kind of came out out of that. So, if, if I were to delegate to somebody, what is their reputation? You know, how are they qualified to be delegated to? Um, one interesting thing that kind of came up as an idea is, you know, what what if you you know, participated in Catalyst Circle and received an NFT? What if, what if you participated as a, a VCA and received an NFT? It's sort of, sort of as a badge uh, that proves that you were participating uh, in these things and, and gives some kind of proof of, uh, of existence of a particular role. Uh, sort of an interesting thing we've been, been discussing. Um, and so that, you know, maybe, maybe there is a, a chance to, to bring about NFTs as a possible incentive, like, hey, you've been, you know, in five funds, like, hey, here's an NFT that celebrates your participation in the community, things like that. So just as a general idea, there may be some reward opportunities or just some, some potential uh, acknowledgement or uh, award certificate kind of things that we could, we could present in that way, but also, you know, proof of participation. And, and that's going to sort of lend itself into the future levels of governance uh, as we we kind of proceed, and so beginning to map map what that might look like um, as we go. So we're spending a lot of time time doing that. Uh, uh, so there's you know we did have that discussion on on the defamation item, and it's certainly something we we should care about. And there there are some guidelines that we do have that's public on, on idea scale um, today, but but there's probably more that we need. To do some of those documents are a little bit dated. We probably do need to come out with some some general policy of uh, code of conduct, uh, if you will, because I think it's slated as code of conduct, but it's really like a, sort of a community uh, general document um, when you click on code of conduct. So there, there's definitely some things we can tighten up there. Um, you know, there there are some changes that are going to be happening in the UI for uh, the. Uh, idea scale interface. Uh, we are working closely with idea scale on, on a number of things to make improvements to the site as we proceed forward as well. But there will be a UI change that's actually about to happen probably tomorrow um, to the interface. Uh, so it, it's really just a UI uh, change. Nothing functional is changing per se. Uh, so that those are some things that I've been actively doing. Um, so coming up next, uh, we definitely want to have uh, a deeper discussion on catalyst parameters, uh, and that's something we entertained as, as a, an initial pilot that we want to run. Uh, we talked about these governance structures sort of being established, and we, we haven't moved the needle in terms of making actions. So one of the things that I'll be taking uh, you know, to the group is, is a catalyst uh, parameters brief, which might is sort of a one pager describing maybe what we want to uh, accomplish and love to get feedback from from this team uh, as we go in into that and then uh, start looking at other places where we would start making some decisions on things as an organization. Uh, so th those are some of the things that uh, I will be working on. Um, other pilots where we'll have opportunities. So as we're building uh, tools, uh, so one of the things I'm, I'm also actively working on is an open API set of requirements that we'll, we'll be able to share voting tools, voting 
capabilities and, and things like that. So one of the things we might look at is possibly bringing to the circle the ability to maybe vote, uh, create some type of pilot election for a, a near term uh, kind of election process, possibly for a general ADA holder or uh, the whole set of Catalyst Circle members in the future. You know, we need to evaluate readiness and, and the ability to do it, but there potentially are some on-chain things we might be able to provide in the short term. Uh, so, you know, definitely bringing up a lot of a lot of different ideas. But but one concept I'd like to, you know folks to think about, uh, which I thought was interesting, was the idea of right now we're all all in it for sort of a quarter at a time. Uh, the suggestion came up is would it make sense to rotate pairs of representatives um, you representing SPOs at a time? So cycle in, you know, the SPO and the general ADA holder folks and, and run an election just for those two roles. And then the other members stay consistent, at least for a time, and then do sort of a rotating swap out, which I really like that concept. Um, just an idea. I just heard it, uh, but I wanted to share that as something we can think about as we look at the future uh, adoption of, of the next circle. Uh, so that's kind of an update for my end. Nothing immediately blocking me other than more more time to get stuff done. But <laughs> uh, looking looking forward to uh, to next year. You had a question, Kenrick? Uh, yeah. So maybe I'll put this in a broader context. I have a question. When we're doing these initial updates, is it appropriate to provide feedback on those updates, or is that more like should we we should wait for that to become an agenda? Because for instance, I have some thoughts on this, on the proposals with the um, delegation to voting, and you've just brought up continuity of the circles, so I have some thoughts on that too. But I, at the same time, I'm not sure that's the purpose of this part of the meeting. So yeah, I'm wondering this, what's appropriate and not not appropriate really for updates, and um, it's not meant for discussions because we want to keep it quick. So if you do have follow-ups, you can take that offline or in chat or at an agenda item at an upcoming meeting. Um, okay, very good. Working into the agenda after. Yeah, okay, That's, that makes sense. So Nori, I'm gonna jump off facilitating and I'm just gonna take notes. I'll hand it over to you to facilitate. Um, so we just did the stand-up, so it's all you know. Okay, is it done? Um, and I apologize for hopping in late. Um, let me catch up really quick. Did we actually look at the prioritized problems board yet? That's no, not that. We're I doing that right now. Do you want me to screen share that? Or... Yeah, that would be great. And okay. you said you you can kind of go through it quickly. Just I, as can, a I can navigate it quickly so we're not wasting time on, on that okay. side. So let me just try that, yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, we would start with, what should we start with community advisor? Uh, sure. So I added these two uh, items to the problem backlog, but those are also in our uh, discussions section. So I can wait and go into details on that. Um, there are other items on here. I'm just starting to get oriented to this. So I'm, it's, I'm pleased to see it all kind of updated now. And my intent on the items that were from the previous circle is to sort of incorporate that work into um, the town hall meeting that I, after town hall meeting I'm going to have on the fifth, and and then make some updates to those as well uh, following that discussion. And and that's my update on the board. Okay. Um, if I go to. Okay, for me on funded proposals, which is this, I have one problem, which is an almost non-existing collaborative layer uh, to welcome newcomers. Um, the work I've done on that has been to um, try and build a community hub for, cap for the capitalist coordinators and, and um, I put in a funding proposal for that um, and trying to gather issues um, from funded proposers from the catalyst coordinators. So that's my status on that. Um, do you do toolmakers and maintainers? 
Uh, should we put an um, action item there uh, in a sense that um, I, there is a lot of proposals which are like pipeline for new uh, proposers and for, for both funding and not funding. Um, I mean, Catapult, the Kimba Labs is doing something. Then there are new Alex, and I, I, I don't remember the names that way, but I know there are several of these which are talk exactly related to that uh, onboarding process and making it easier for new people to be part of um, Project Catalyst. So perhaps there could be an action item to collect these kinds of proposals and, and, and have like a check list of what proposals to look into it. And if some of them get funded, uh, and perhaps they could also pretty much solve the problem. Okay, I suppose that's that's an action item that could be related to this. Is that what you mean, Tivo? Yeah. Okay. But how do we put that action item down? And is it like like as as a comment? Um, or, uh... This board is at a really high strategic level. Um, if we want to track tasks and stuff, we should have a separate board that breaks those down. Um, and that's a good question. Does the circle want to track activity at that level? Or do you have your own mechanisms to do that? I don't recommend it. I think the circles board should be kept at a high level so that we don't, so the process doesn't become a task itself. Normally what would happen after the meeting, we'd look back at the notes and then add them to the detail of the, each of these issues. But this is really just to go through the board and to see where we are at different state high level statuses, as Kenrick said, Tiva. So, but, um, Alison, you have a question or comment? Yeah, yeah thanks. Because I I still feel a bit behind with the board, and I'm catching up to how it all works generally. And I'll just to be honest, my GitHub skills are not great. So, is the idea here that in between meetings we put our issues that come from our constituents, for lack of a better word, into the board for discussion during the meeting. And I did just a few minutes ago see that there's a link to past issues that I haven't looked at yet, but I will. But just to just to clarify the process to make sure I understand. I think there was the original intention of the system that was introduced by Governance Alive in Circle version one um, that each representative would go away and problem sense and then come back with their prioritized problems. And those prioritized problems would end up on the board here. Um, there was some kind of um, process of refining that that Governance Alive had, which we could refer back to in Circle One documentation if you want to. Um, but what Kenrick done, well, what Kenrick has done, I think is quite valid. Um, I mean, it's also up to us in a sense of how we would do this, but, uh, but I, I think it, it, the main thing is to keep it at quite a high level. Um, but certainly being aware of the problems that are already on the board, Alison, like the these ones that are assigned to general voters. Um, actually, this one here um, was um, a kind of individual initiative by your predecessor. So I'm not really sure if that's particularly alive or relevant um, and this one is very general <laughs> improve awareness of catalyst yeah. so yeah. I'm not sure how useful that is either so I'm actually on that note improve awareness I feel like we could technically remove it from the board and uh, it started before the summit and I think the summit pretty much explode at the awareness of Project Catalyst. It's ongoing. It's like, it, it just, yes, we could make more events and more something to, to gather. But right now, I think we are in a moment where we, we have a lot of people which already generate the feedback to improve, get more people in. So I think we are in an evolving system which doesn't really need even better awareness. Uh, projects as of right now at least this is my opinion and I know. okay so but before coming i mean commenting on tivo's point about this 
particular problem. I should take the problems that have come up in the various forums I've been engaged in and put them into GitHub in the backlog section. Is that accurate? What we did last time was for each rep to come, go to their community, do some problem sensing, and then come back with, I think it was two per community. And those are the ones that initially populated the board. Um, so it's not intended for every little problem that comes up, but the most important that you want to handle that you think you can get done during your candidacy. Um, and, but as you can see, there's a lot left from last time. So <laughs> they were even two per thing is ambitious for a three month term. Um, so that's something to be aware of too. But I think it's at a high level, I think we're learning like improve awareness of Project Catalyst maybe is too vague and high level and maybe it has, we should break that down. Um, although the title might just need to be adjusted. But I do think, look at the ones that have the tag of your position in it, review them. If they're still valid, then those are ones to actively work on and promote. If there are other ones that are emerging as more important, then um, those should go on the board and they should fall back to the backlog or something. But it's really a tool for you to manage your own activities within the circle and communicate it to the community. And it's also a tool just for accountability and for knowledge sharing. And because we should be reviewing this every week, it'll um, highlight the stuff that's being worked on so that the community can see how is this going. And um, the board itself is public, so anyone can look at it and take a look at the notes too. But the meeting and the recording are also important communication mechanisms for that. Okay, that's yeah, great, thank you. Is just backing up what Nori said, as I understand agile project management uh, constraints on the number of cards that can be in each of these columns is an important principle. And, and so defining the constraints of like how many cards you're assigned, you, you've assigned to a particular role or other kinds of constraints are a valuable way to make sure you're actually prioritizing things and not just getting clogged and overwhelmed that's a good point there's a methodology called kanban that has work in progress constraints per column and we could assign that if that's helpful for people so we could say it's maximum of three and then we look at the raw problems there's five in there so as a team we would go in there and say how can we at least promote two of those into a well-defined problem so that and that will focus our attention um mm -hmm. and it's really meant to accelerate the pipeline. Um, and that's a, a useful mechanism, but I think as we're getting started, we may want to at least just get organized and make sure everyone has a good concept of what their cards are. And if any new ones need to be added, any old ones removed, and then we can take a look next time at kind of where things are sitting and evolve the process a bit. Mm -hmm. So, and one of the things that's important to me, and this is really helpful to understand how the board works, Lots of people, or not lots, but people are giving me feedback that they feel strongly about. I want to acknowledge that I've heard them and publicize their issues somewhere, even if it's not on this board. And so I may do that a bit in town hall or I have a spot and have a spot on a website where I could at least list issues that have come up in my office hours. So people feel that they're being heard and I'm making their issues public. And then take the ones that are the priority and have the most likelihood of something that I or the circle can do something about and run it on the board. Does that, does that sound reasonable to everybody? As, and especially if you're going to be using Reddit, um, Reddit has an upvote and you could put them all in a topic and, and the public can be voting on which ones they feel are most important. And then that could guide your importance on what you work on here. Yeah, that's excellent. Yeah. I mean, I, I just raised the issue of what kind of platform should, this is the platform that we share as Circle, which is the prioritized problems board, but then there's a platform for each one of us, you know, so for example, I'm building a platform for Catalyst Coordinators, which hopes to, which I'm trying to, uh, it's basically an issue management system. Um, and that, that's something that could benefit you, Alison, as well, you know, that you, you would have like more, more granular, more detail in the issues that you're getting from people as you come along. And out of those issues, you might then 
um, aggregate those into major issues, which would then come on to prioritise problems. I think that was the original idea of the prioritise problems. I mean, un under this particular GitHub, couldn't there be multiple boards? Yeah, they could, and we could. The problem is the, I think, um, Kenrick and Norris referred to is the level of detail we want, Harris. So, um, and how manageable that is in, for our, the lifetime of circle. So that you, let's say IOG, you've got two cards. Um, they're two quite big issues, you know, mm -hmm. and yeah, so do we want a separate repository where you're, where we're having all the detail? That's what I'm saying. And then, out, then, or, and then, this is the place where that is filtered. I suppose that's the decision. Yeah, well, right. the other thing in deliberation, I, I think we do want to keep it at a high level. I completely agree with that. But you know, it, instead of running off and you know building a whole new tool to track it somewhere else, uh, I mean, at least this is a repository which is intended to track things. Not necessarily something we discuss in the circle, but at least could be a place to to put to trap those. Uh, those concerns that you're hearing from each of your uh, your groups. Well, and maybe that what Harris is proposing can be part of each representative kind of starting to build a team of volunteers within their group. Because for instance, you wouldn't want to overwhelm the administrative team of the circle. You, you, you'd kind of need an administrator to help you manage the board, for instance. Um, so I like the idea, you know, of each rep maybe having their own board uh, for their projects, but it probably should be in the context of building a volunteer team that's working with you on that board and not trying to do it all yourself or putting more burdens on the circle administrators. The simplest approach, sorry, Matthias has got his hand up. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Eventually, I'll have a new background. Let me lower my virtual <laughs> hand. OK, so Nori brought up Kanban, right, which I've been working with uh, since 2015. And the question I have uh, working on this board is that of ownership. Because if I look at the prototyping in progress column, there is uh, one issue, right? It says, TNM, there is a lack of onboarding and introduction systems and structures for project columns, right? So this is actually also a project uh, sorry, a problem statement that the Cardano Foundation uh, announced uh, a couple of town halls ago. Um, so it has the tool makers and maintainers in the title, yet it has the CAs in the tag. And I added the CF I created and then added the CF tag to it. But then, you know, I've been told, well, you know, this is really not something that currently the foundation owns. So my, my question, I guess, is how do we want to work on this? Because in Kanban, as Nori said, we have prioritized problems that we often also work collaboratively on, on this. I mean, this is catalyst circle, right? We have different problem statements uh, from our uh, groups, but do we want to like collaborate on these issues? How do we, where does the board come in? Um, I guess I need some clarity what we actually want to accomplish and how we are going to do that. Collaboration, I think, is encouraged. Because you can put right. multiple tags on these items, so it shouldn't be owned by, it doesn't have to be owned by a single rep. Um, and I think their initial, where it says SPO colon, the, that, that was, was a group that initially brought the card to the circle after their initial problem sensing. Um, but it doesn't have to be owned long term by them. Um, sorry, I cut you off, Stephen. Yeah, if I could, yeah, I was just going to say that the, the, it is, this is just, please bear in mind, this is what we inherited. Okay. This is not how we have to do things. Okay. There is a lot of documentation of how people came to this in the circle version one Git book. Like, and Dor and Victor worked on the whole process, a rationale of why they chose these. So if you're interested in that, go and read that document, mate. And so, I mean, obviously, we're obviously coming up to speed, but what, what, what Harris just said, yes, we can put all issues into this one repository. We don't have to have high level issues here. And we can then filter that by just saying, what are the prioritized problems by clicking on this label here? 
And also we can have, as Nori pointed out, we can have, I, I did remove the CF label from that problem, Matthias, because under the old system, that's not how it was done. <laughs> but under the new system, under our system, we can do it how we want to do it. You know, under our system, we can say, okay, see, Cardano Foundation and IOG do own this problem, for example. Um, so, yeah, I'm just saying it's quite flexible, really. Sorry to yeah, 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 thank you. And I understand the historical context. It's, uh, mm -hmm. I guess the question is, do we want to continue with that or do we want to operate differently? I mean, personally, I, I mean, I'm going to try and collaborate anyway, uh, whether I see if the tag is on it or not, but uh, just getting a little bit on clarity on how to utilize the, the board most effectively. Um, that's what I'm seeking to get clarity on. And maybe we don't have to do that in, in this meeting and I'll make sure to read up on more documentation as well and have Slack conversations around that. Thank you. And just before Tivo jumps in, I just want to say we're going way over time for this section and cutting into our consent agenda. Um, so do we want to continue talking about process and how this is going to work or do we want to take that offline and... I added one more agenda regarding the, I think, uh, oh, maybe not, never mind. I thought they added a bit I mean, really, really we should be addressing the problems that are on the board. <laughs> I hate to say this, but you know, we haven't done that for the past three meetings. Yeah. Um, so if you can concentrate on either saying, these problems don't mean anything to me and we need to redefine them, or not, that's, I think the most product, that's my view, what would be most productive. Okay, so we have a proposal to stay on the, this board, work yeah. through it, and then once no, we have could, time could left. You, could you call out also who to choose next, so I'm not the person choosing next, so. <laughs> okay, yeah. um, a few things. Um, first, what bothers me is that all of these uh, issues have a catalyst prioritized problems which means there are none, there are some other issues which there are not. So I, I, there was a discussion from Alison and before that, uh, like, hey, should we have other boards or not? I will start by using only this board until we see that this is too much now. So when you have a problem and you don't have nowhere to put it, Put it here, everybody will see it in the background. Just know that if you put your problem here, is it as on as par as every other problem here? Because if it's just uh, something what could be solved in a week or, or has like a, is, is it solvable and not that, uh, not, not that hard problem, perhaps it's not, it's not the place for that. So yeah, I, I would suggest to put everything here and this tag catalyst priorities problems is just something we accept from what problem backlog to look next or we lose that tag at all because right now it's just confusing. And on that vein, can we move on to the prioritized problems, please? Yes. Um, Tivo, why don't you go next with uh, tool makers and maintainers? Um, okay, so uh, yeah, I added on here um, myself also in, in the collaborative layer because I, I feel it's something uh, what goes under my area of what I want to do. Um, next one, there are no systems to track and visualize trust and participation. In this section, um, I just recently watched the um, Atala Prism credential and then I looked at the video what uh, George Lovegrove had with, uh, I don't know, in Swarm or just uh, randomly regarding of um, rewarding participation from Swarm and after downhauls and workshop schools with tokens and have like a plan of how to, what kind of wallets they need to have, how to give them uh, how to revoke them, all of that stuff. So uh, I guess this is something uh, to talk with him because he has some uh, insight into that and from probably maybe some from, from IRG could also help with who is related to Atala Brisson uh, to 
this, so yeah, but I don't know, this is more about how do we visualize and trust. So it means that there is already something to track right now on chain. We don't have, don't have much to track. But like, what, what else are you expecting <laughs> to add here? Uh, I haven't looked at none of the tasks myself. Like I did when in the search, circle one was, but right now I'm quite um, forgotten. Sin, do you have a question or comment? It, did, I didn't, did, were you calling on me, Nori? Oh, you had your hand up. So I was just wondering if you yes, had a question. Yeah, okay. I just, I didn't hear if you said my name. Um, I had, yes, a comment on what Tivo had just said about Atala Prism and that particular problem, um, which is that, yeah, I completely agree. I think that verified credentials is a really good solution to that problem. And I've been deep in the Atala Prism course as well. And, and Kendrick and I have been talking about a project for verified credentials for CAs, but it could certainly be broader. And that would give you exactly that, a way to visualize trust and participation. And in fact, I wanted to get back to what Harris was saying earlier on in his, his stand up about issuing NFTs for participation. That's one way to do it. And it's live today, whereas the Atala Prism did technology is not not, but I think that DIDS would be de decentralized uh, identification and verified credentials would be a, a much um, more flexible way of issuing that kind of proof of participation and would also have the benefit of really promoting the technology, which I think has huge, huge potential to grow the Cardano ecosystem globally. So I guess bottom line, I'm happy to be added to that um, that problem, if that makes sense. I think there's also an interesting tie into what you mentioned earlier around popularity, because I think that is a form of trust and reputation. Um, so I think it's worthwhile thinking about that in conjunction with this rather than as a an issue. Maybe it's a feature that we need to figure out how to make more clear. Yes, exactly. And that's exactly right, Nori. And that's what I was trying to say about popularity is that, yeah, you said it better than I did. It is a form of reputation. And so it's hard to eliminate that because that's how people are, are making a lot of their, their decisions around who to trust. Mm -hmm. I think something already has been done by our very own uh, Steven Wittsenstein with his uh, GitHub and GitBook tracking, pretty much. He's looking at other projects he's interested in uh, and taking notes of who is participating, who is doing what. So I think this is also uh, a system which is tracking, although it's uh, right now one person. <laughs> but but it, he has the infrastructure behind it. So I wonder how would I have you defined the problem or maybe uh, because we could include that in. I, I see a lot of what I do is providing exactly what you said, the infrastructure, but the problem is, so providing a lot of the raw data while, and there are other people working on it apart from me, like Eastern Town Hall, for example, as well. Mm -hmm. But the, but it's taking that data and then um, analyzing it to see how does that translate into participation, into contribution and into trust. And that, that, that may feed more into mechanisms you know that we need to more think about collaboratively i would say yeah i'm not, i just wanted to add to that you know i'm certainly happy to to join in some of that discussion um you know there, there definitely can be things that can be added on chain um you know if de depending on how we set that reputation i, I certainly love the, the the prism and and the did uh, approach to it for sure. I think there's there's a lot there. Um, there there are some some signals that we do get in Catalyst. So if you are a CA, uh, for instance, there there's a payment that goes out. So we know the amount of money that has been paid out as incentive to specific wallets. If we are able to understand that that wallet is attached to a particular CA. Um, so that is the, an initial point of, of, uh, of some reputation is how much have you earned in the community? 
um, at least as an initial point. And that, that might be something that we can start with. Ideally, we add attribution uh, as metadata, potentially identity, and then uh, specific things attached to that. Uh, I, I think there are some problems with, with NFTs specifically, uh, certainly cool to collect them, um, but those also could be traded or sold. And then now suddenly you have credibility because you bought it or you uh, strong arm someone into giving it to you. <laughs> I have to follow up on what Harris was saying about NFTs and what you were saying earlier about participation, an NFT badge, for example, or something like that could be a good badge of participation. But a GitHub repository and tracking would be more about contribution and there's a subtle difference between participation and work done or contribution you know someone might participate in some something but then there's lots of people who do a lot of work behind the scenes um, and there are people i think in the ecosystem who are working on trying to link those two like to start to try and analyze the work that's being done through various tracking mechanisms it doesn't have to be github by the way it can also be google sheets or something and then collating that information and translating that into um, an assessment of this person has done this amount of work kind of thing. So, so do I, what we want to get here is we, we want a system where we can check some wallet pretty much if, if you put it on chain and that, that uh, we need to kind of read that the issue is the issue that we don't have on chain trust visualize trust visualizations or we have the fact that in project catalyst we don't know people who to trust and we don't have a, like a mind map of people who is contributor and who is not which is are, are two different things and mm -hmm. i suggest that yeah. those that are interested in this card get together and kind of a offline meeting together and kind of brainstorm what, what's the scope of this card and how what's the strategy to approach it. Um, and because I think there's a lot of interesting things that we could do. Um, but until we're a little bit sure and have a proposal or some idea, um, I'd like to move those kind of conversations offline so that we're not taking up too much of the meeting. All right, um, JP, can you remind me who's already gone? My memory. So we haven't we haven't finished Tivo's cards yet. So okay. <laughs> so, you know, I know this is this is um, well maybe there you know but at the same time maybe there's kind of a limit to how many cards you go through each time too if we're time sensitive. Yeah. Yeah. I am um, sorry, Nor. Um. Maybe we should start from the end. It doesn't matter who is who's the role is. Well, so we've heard from CAs, funded proposers, tool makers, and maintainers, and the general ADA holder. So we just need the last um, person. What? SPOs I and IOG, IOG? Yeah. Unit advisor. IOG? No, we got, we got CAs, I we started with CAs. Oh, okay. So yeah, we need Harris and uh, we're, we're missing Raymond, so Harris. Great, yeah, so, so for uh, that specific, uh, item, I guess, um, you know, how do we remove IOHK from the decisions made in Catalyst? That is certainly something we're actively moving on. So perhaps we can change the status. Um, you know, th this is part of uh, the solutions we're proposing for the, the circle and the Catalyst Technical Council. Um, it is certainly, uh, you know, we're looking to run pilots in Catalyst parameters, decision-making, um, so that is something we uh, have, have started. Uh, we have shared, at least with the circle, we've uh, established some level of the governance structures there uh, and, and shared that with the community, um, at least at a high level. Uh, we probably need to get into a little bit more granularity of, okay, what, what decisions are we going to enable for the circle first? Um, and then kind of go from there. But I think we have made some progress on that specific ticket. Um, the, the next one, uh, I probably need to get a little bit more, more background on, um, so I can probably take the action to uh, sync up with Door a little bit more on uh, 
sort of that deep. So there's a, a couple of issues potentially in this one, and I don't know if it deserves to be broken down but, uh, a little further because uh, there's there's coordinating the building of you know the developer and then the governance system itself. Um, you know, how do we avoid duplications in just those items uh, is is kind of a question in my mind, or is it how do we avoid duplication in general across Catalyst? Um, so we we you know there's definitely efforts in and generating partnerships is something uh, that uh, you know the team at IO is is actually actively working on a lot of good discussion um, you know in in doing that that part and so I'll probably need to take this offline unless someone else here has specific background on on the exact uh, nature of what was discussed previously. And, and I do think there are some new ones that I'll, I'll be introducing, but uh, uh, you know, it's, it's great that we're focusing on these cards in this, uh, in this meeting and we, we should definitely keep this as a focus in future meetings. So this is great. I'm glad we're spending the time in here and starting to move the needle on some of these items. Right. And that one's in the picked up ready column. So my guess is there are, is some kind of material or knowledge that door would have on what the next step should be. Um, and yeah, and I like, I appreciate these columns. At first I thought they were, there were way too many. Like I'm used to having like three, a backlog doing and done, but this does actually pr promote a process where there's an actual column where we share with the community and we seek their input. And then we, so that kind of, not forces, but it encourages specific actions to happen in this pipeline of stuff. So I would, yeah, so I appreciate that. So if you all agree with it, I would encourage people to kind of follow that flow and not skip call yeah. out number shared with the community and get their input and things like that. So so um, just as an act of business, uh, are, are we just freely able to move our cards if we're primarily assigned to it or should we discuss and then move? How would this uh, be move cards in the circle meeting? And the project yeah, that's was to move too. them in the meetings, yeah. Okay, good. All right, yeah, I just confirmed. All right, um, and then Raymond's not here for the SPL cards, um, but we can catch up with him next time. All right. If we're gonna move to that discussion section, we could just go to the cards that I put in. Um, in the backlog. Because that's, that's next, I can do that, yeah. Yeah, next section is um, continuity of challenges. Okay, so I, um, actually it's the other card, uh, but yeah, the, it's, well, I, either we can do it in either order. I'm fine. Yeah, they're okay, one after. Fine. Okay, fine. Um, so in terms of the, well, which are we going to do? We're going to do, okay, so selecting the technical council. Um, as I mentioned in our last meeting, I think the public vote um, is very appropriate for the circle where it's designed that each representative is representing members of the community. But I have a lot of concerns about a popular vote for the technical council. And, and maybe some of that was even voiced earlier in the community where uh, Allison was bringing up the point that, you know, there's concern about the processes in the circle now just becoming a popularity contest. And then that, that popularity contest ends up excluding members of the community that, that um, maybe have characteristics and personalities and skills that are different than just being popular. Um, so I don't, I'm not advocating a particular process at this time, but I did in the second paragraph, give an example of an alternative process that I think could cut through this. Um, so I'll describe that alternative process and then maybe open it up for discussion. So one, one example of a different kind of process would be that you still want community input, right? So, but maybe the way you would get the community input is that you would randomly select from the people participating in idea scale as representative of participants in the catalyst process, um, a council 
of say between five to 11 people, whatever you thought the size was appropriate. And then that committee would be responsible for interviewing candidates. Um, and, and it would be typical to a recruiting process where there'd be a posting of a role on the technical council. Uh, people could be either, either apply for it or could be nominated for it. And then that committee would be responsible for interviewing them, uh, reviewing their skills and making a recommendation to the community as to who's the best match to represent this technical spec, right? Because, and that's the di distinction I make in this council, you're representing technical specs. You're not representing people in the community so much. So it's important to evaluate the technical skills. It's important to evaluate the integrity of that person and, and then how they would represent a technical council. Um, I will say too, it could be, I'll just say as a final thought that, you know, the circle itself could be this committee. However, if the technical council and the circle are gonna be making decisions together then some independence between the two is probably important. So at the end there, I kind of suggested maybe something like um, the, 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 this, the, this committee would have to have like a high threshold of consensus towards um, agreeing on who to recommend. And, and the circle might have a lower threshold of Kind of approving that and and only if there was a lot of dissent you know would there be some maybe some uh decision not to uh have that person uh join the technical council so i'm interested in thoughts and what other people think about you know the process of um the community appointing members to the technical council even your hand went up before the other. Yeah, I can't put my hands up because I'm screen sharing. <laughs> so um, yeah, um, the, re the immediate thing that came to mind, Kemrick, was this random selection. A random selection wouldn't include the capability of the people to select technical qualifications. So surely you need a capability to assess technical qualifications in the first place so it can't be a random perhaps, selection perhaps perhaps although i i'm not an expert in this area um but i have read of um particularly california the state of california and some other government agencies using processes like this we use it in juries for instance you know that's very common um but actually it, it turns out as long as you have, I think, a fair number of people and you get a cross section, that these kind of random committees can be a lot more effective than you would think. Um, and because, and part of what you get is a cross section of perspective, and then the team working as a group to kind of bring their expertise, their perspective into the problem that they're responsible for making progress on. So um, that's a fair criticism and would be worth taking uh, further research on. Uh, but I, my own sort of reading in this area is that these kinds of teams work more effectively than you would think. Okay, just to jump in before we get into a, a deeper discussion on the solutions. Um, yeah. I would suggest taking that second paragraph out as it is suggesting a solution. And since we are in the problem, like I think our goal today should be to agree whether this should live on the board or not. Um, yeah, and right. Not, okay. not talk about the solution as much because right. those are, are things that move it along the board and um, just to keep the meeting moving along. Okay. Um, TiVo. Yeah, we find a butcher because to me, this solution would only work for Catalyst Circle and not technical. Because if I want, obviously, we want technical 
council dog to change because uh, from change you will see innovation and, and like upgrade. But um, I, then again, I would rather see the, the technical circle themselves select these people who could be taking the, the job and uh, has the capability of continuing that project. But that will lead like this, like, uh, how do you say, um, uh, like, uh, like a mafia where you, every, everybody is their family. So that would be need another mechanism to for community to say that this council is now kind of corrupted and we, we hold you like we, we, we take power away from you until something else is figured out. Um, how do we establish that situation? I don't know. But technically, I don't think any random people or popularity announcement will find us the solution of who is most technically capable to, capable to do that. And we don't know, at least from my point of view, we don't have a, the, the papers or certificates to prove that somebody is technically adapted to be a technical counsel for something which is novel. I think this is very rare position. All right, Alison. Yeah, I, may, I might maybe, def, well, defer to Harris because I, as far as keeping the problem on the board, I love the idea that, that the solution is going in. I think it's an important problem to keep on the board, but my question was, how does this fit into the way IOG is envisioning the pilot? Great, yeah, no, I, I, I can definitely um, add some color in here. Uh, try to get my hand up as fast as I could. Um, so the, yeah, there, there, there's this, this catalyst and Voltaire and, and Voltaire is going to be attempting to take on a lot more of the, the protocol level decisions. Right. And so, uh, there, there it, within catalyst, we have this ability to experiment with government ideas, with processes. Um, we can, we can make some of these, these updates there definitely is thinking that there would be folks that would be elected that would then be representatives that would make these technical decisions for future technical councils. And there's, there's actually a lot of domain expertise um, that we're expecting. And this, this, some of that feedback on the structure for this actually, you know, came from uh, Kevin, who was, you know, appointed to the, the first Catalyst Technical Council um, of these notions that in future governance uh, paradigms, which are sort of being looked at, and we will be sharing that those details shortly um, of what we might see as the vision for for Voltaire, um, includes uh, a number of different councils. Right, so we're in this early phase of of development that the notion of trying to uh, do an early experiment and a pilot was the reason to try to build up this sort of bicameral concept, see how that fits together, see what learnings we can bring into, into these future, future governance uh, structures. Um, and so you know, there's gonna be an evolution from Catalyst to Voltaire and then potentially into DCF governance uh, in the future as we so, we're sort of looking at this. So the, these are some of the considerations we're thinking about. So I, I well, I like I like this notion and and you know trying trying to standardize it. You know, at, at what point do we introduce you know that uh, selection process? We we might consider it now. Maybe it's it's a little bit um, early because there is more coming. Um, I would say. So I, I'm questioning whether it should be on the board now, but uh, please go ahead. Well, if I could respond, I mean, it, I understand that the Voltaire team is designing a bicameral process, but it's also been presented that both of these committees would be selected in the same, using the same mechanism, which is a popular vote across the whole community. So I don't, I'm not convinced that the two councils would have different points of view if they're 
um, selected using the same method. That's, that's my biggest concern is yeah. to think through how the selection process mm. shapes the character of each of those, these councils. And the other thing is, I don't think it's a good idea to defer this because if, as we just talked about, there's a desire for the catalyst community to kind of step up and begin to take on some of the responsibilities of uh, managing the Cardano community, then this is an important area. You know, the, it, the design work is, is ongoing and, and, you know, either the community has some input to it or it, it's, just, it's another design that's kind of, um, I don't, I want to be careful about the language I use, but it's another design that is uh, implemented for the community, but how much community input went into the design is maybe limited right now. Sure, and, and, and that's, that's fair. So I, I think some of the next steps are sort of bringing and sharing some of those ideas, uh, you know, in, in various places, whether that's to the community at large or to the circle, um, you know, before we start getting into, into solutions. So we, we can certainly keep it as a problem. I, I would certainly agree with that. Um, the, 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 theory, the theory is that there is, um, there's the Catalyst Technical Council, which might be related to Catalyst specific things, which I do want to separate from overall protocol governance and the, 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 the really deep technical bits that are required to manage a protocol level discussion, whether that's on the economic parameters or operational parameters or you know, these kinds oh, of- Oh, absolutely. No, this was, and we can, we can change the title. This was referring to the Catalyst Technical Council. So can, I, can I make a suggestion that we make this card the card for the technical council and then move it through our process because there is a we state what it is more clearly we take it to the community and get input and it would be a really great IOG kind of card to be moving through and then make sure we're hitting all the important points there I think that might help with this conversation because since it's not there um, other cards are coming in that highlight issues with that proposal. And I think the proposal itself should be the high level strategic card that we're moving across. Great. Yeah. And, and as I said, right from the beginning, the, the proposed solution is not even a re necessarily a recommendation yet. It's just to give an example. I, I, I'm hoping that other pr proposals will come forward um, that can be evaluated and some research is done to understand a community process that would get very talented technical people that you know that's the outcome you want yeah and we definitely have some thoughts on on that and um and we'll be sharing that shortly but no, this is great yeah thank you for adding iog we definitely should should be involved in helping to drive this um and so that's that's great so the kevin you referred to is that kevin hammond house um Correct. Yeah, and I know yeah, we want to stay on schedule. So as far as I'm concerned, that's a good discussion of this one. And I'll, if we can go to the next one, I'll try to be conscientious Just of the time. The, for a clarification, you mentioned that technical uh, council is selected with the same uh, method. But from my understanding, there is no method except that IOG appointed three people to do it. And that's about it. Is, well, is it yeah, but that's, that was temporary, as I understand it. They've also proposed that there be an election. That's what I'm, I'm suggesting is let's, let's figure out a good mm -hmm. process before we just jump to another election. Yeah, we, we do have to define yeah. that because, yeah, that, yeah. that was that, that's an assumption that it's the same, right. but it's may not, it may not be the same. Right. So, OK, so then um, the second issue I brought here is, uh, I think it's really terrific that the Catalyst community now is defining the challenges. I think there's a lot of uh, really good things that have come out of that. But even in this very first round, uh, which is round seven, there were some pretty significant categories that had been in all the previous rounds that got dropped. And I know that caused some concerns in the community. Um, so I was thinking about, you know, how you could define a process that would still be 
chosen by the community based on the voting, but would allow for some continuity um, for projects. So, so an example here is that um, in, in the first time a category was presented, uh, perhaps it has a higher threshold for being approved as a new category. But then for not forever, but for a limited period of time, say two or three more rounds, like, and let's use three as an example, because that gives you a, like a one year process for that category. Then um, to, to continue the challenge, there would be a smaller threshold um, and thereby there'd be kind of a need for the community to say, no, this challenge isn't really working and isn't really producing results. So we need to, to cut it um, rather than being judged on the same scale of something new being proposed. Um, and there would have to be some work done on exactly what those thresholds are and, and what, what the kind of design of it is. But I think if we did something like this, it would um, provide the community with the opportunity to both be defining all the challenges, but also making sure that we're not kind of getting schizophrenic each quarter as to what the, you know, the larger, higher level goals of the community are. Um, and then I'll just maybe close with, you know, typically, and, and again, I think IOG used something like this, a committee would um, define the higher level goals, you'd have these broad categories, and then those would uh, be persistent for a longer period of time. And, and that's what we saw in the earlier rounds of, of the Catalyst program. And I think that would be more typical of how a group of people discussing what's priorities would, would kind of arrive at conclusions. But it's harder to do when, you, you know, when you're um, sort of independently voting. Uh, and so you have to be careful about how you design the vote is my is kind of my point. And I'll pause there and take some feedback. Yes. Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, so there, I think the community um, dropped the ball in that they were surprised and like, oh, now we have to, <laughs> what, the developer ecosystem challenge isn't in there? Um, so for fund eight, that's actually the developer ecosystem challenge that I uh, put in there uh, with Rodrigo. And then of course we also have the open source developer ecosystem. So, and I think as community members, we can make to, uh, we, we can and should, you know, advocate for people to also vote on those challenge settings. Um, I would like to see how fund uh, seven uh, will turn out. So what will, what challenges will come up in fund eight uh, before changing that part uh, as well. That's that's my piece on this. Yeah. Matthias touched the correct point. I think we just didn't understand the technology we were using and was not and this is not solving the problem. This is just adding more complexity to it, right? In my opinion. But I do see here one some one place where we could make it easier is to how do we allocate funds between these proposals um yeah my i don't know it's not a suggestion place but uh like Kenrick, you're very statistical and i love your like stuff where we could use the voting amount uh, to to measure how much something gets to the like the most voted stuff gets the most money and uh, at some point there is a, like a cutoff rate you can calculate which is the like the middle and yeah uh, after. and then the, the most the least amount gets the, the top so we don't have to think about how much something costs it's more about what people vote on the most it's probably the most what th we think that should get the most attention and so yeah, I think the, the funding team, part is the problem. You know, it's interesting. I mean, the, our team did propose something like that for Fund Six. It wasn't funded, so we're not working on that problem. But you know, that is an interesting uh, proposal that we've thought about. We might put it in for a future round. We we didn't concentrate on that for this round. Even. 
Yeah, I put in a couple of challenge settings myself and just looking at some of the CA's assessments. What seems to be missing from this is continuity seems to be fundamentally related to quality. And a lot of feedback I've seen is related to the consistency of challenge settings. You know, that um, a lot of people seem to be saying one challenge is very different from another in terms of the quality of how it sets the challenge and also how the metrics are communicated. Um, so, which actually does a disservice to the challenge. So a challenge can appear to run out of steam, not because it's running out of steam, but because it's perhaps been poorly framed. Um, and I, I also, there's the issue of qual the quality of issue of how people have been asking, can we improve the quality of a challenge setting if it is voted for? So once it's voted for, it might be quite, someone might have quickly drafted that challenge setting. IOG, I believe, used to do this with their own challenges as well. And then once it's voted for, you just proofread it and make it much more presentable and much more uh, easy to apply metrics to. Thank you, Harris. So, so definitely, um, you know, some, some of the intent of, of bringing some decision-making to the Catalyst Circle is to help define things like okay, how, how much are we gonna put into the developer ecosystem, right, for the next fund? Like that, that is a catalyst parameter squarely. And the idea is that the catalyst circle can influence things like that. Cause we are hearing from the community, potentially as representatives uh, of those community members. And, and this kind of goes back to the idea, what does it mean to be a catalyst proposal or, or a catalyst circle proposal? Right. So it, it, is, there, is there an ability for the circle itself to influence that continuity? So IOG was doing that. Our goal was to give the control to the people, right? And, and now we're seeing this sort of variance and people are all over the place. Um, unfortunately, there's not a lot of engaged voters and, and that's, that's also part of the problem. So on average, I think in the last fund, on, people only voted for nine things on average of the wallets that voted. So if you're going into nine things, you know, you're not necessarily focusing in specific areas. There's not a lot of coverage. Um, but so, so the, the, that establishing continuity, not to get into solutions, but part of the intention of giving that control to the Catalyst Circle is maybe the Catalyst Circle has, if it's a Catalyst Circle proposal, this is what we recommend. That could be stated as a recommendation. Um, based on the voices we hear from the people. So that, that's some thoughts, but the idea is that we would control how much is in each of those potentially. Um, I do like the idea of also having some kind of balanced voting system as well, but um, th these are some of the ideas that I had. Uh, so could like, I, I want to get some clarification on what Harry said. Um, sure. Is that all right, Nori? Um, yeah, I just don't want to get into problem solving here because that's not the purpose. Yeah, all right, fine. Um, may, so well, I just let me... to say, it sounds like there's general consensus from what I've heard that this is probably a good card to have on the board and dive deeper into. Um, and as an extension, it looks what? like it may I be was really just against that. <laughs> initial opportunity for one of the, the new Catalyst Expert Council plus the circle actually making some decisions and maybe saying, these are the three challenge categories that the circle and the experts council recommends, kind of like how IOG used to do it um, and taking some of that responsibility over and shepherding some of the more important things that as a circle you decide is the things that should have continuity or should be in each fund. Um, but yeah, so- Yeah, we can and maybe along that, that line, Nori, you could also do what you something like you did with the previous one where, there's a clarity between defining the problem and then there's a proposed solution, but that's not necessarily the solution. And that mm -hmm. might alleviate what Tivo and both Harris have saying is that, you know, they may be in agreement with the, with the need for continuity in the challenge, but they may have some other ideas about how you achieve that. So mm -hmm. that would be perfectly fine. That would be good. That would be helpful. Okay. So yeah, those sound like two really good cards to add to the board that we can start to track and have conversations around. Okay. And okay. I'm just, you know, we, we should go on, but I'll also just say that in, in proposing this idea about the continuity, I was also thinking about the circle and technical 
uh, member processes, but uh, but that to me is a little more sensitive. So I didn't want to bring it up right now. But you know, Harris mentioned it earlier, and, and I agree that that's uh, that's a related problem to this. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and this might not be the go ahead Alice. best time to mention this, but I'll just throw this out there too that somewhere there's a role for challenge teams in that on that problem, and right. and even something for the circle would perhaps be, do we need a challenge team rep to the circle? Mm, mm. Mm. It's good. All right. We are down to the last 15 minutes for conversation. Um, Evo, your name is on the next three things. Is there, do you want to try to tackle two of those or do you have one that's more important that you would like to start with? Uh, yes. I, 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 think right now, uh, depending how fast we get this video out, it is re relevant to discuss about veteran community advisor stage. Mm -hmm. And I, but to, to me, what I just want to speak out is, is to the, all the veteran community advisors themselves, that from, yeah, I, I know this is very, from your perspective, which are like, how do you see uh, what should what should we strive for? Uh, what do we see as a good, excellent, and filtered out as we go through this? Um, from this process, I think um, what veteran commentator has to look into is mainly for five and four stars to to filter out, um, because I I am starting to sense that the proposers start to have doing more filtering out themselves because this, these are their proposals they defend against. And this is more scalable uh, way to look at it compared to that we get more and more proposals and uh, more and we need more and more advisors uh, like, like better advisors to, to clean it up. So if proposers to defending and rationale for the filtering uh, out the worst ones, it's easier for the veteran government advisor to just to look at the thing and the, the assessment, what needs to be worked out. And then it's yeah easier to like agree or disagree with that. Um, second thing, yeah. Uh, what I noticed a lot from these proposal excels is that I think the um, this uh, Catholic school and uh, the guides, what IAG is pushing out, and announcements, and a lot of other platforms, what now provide information how to do assessments, is helping because we we see a lot of more um, details on assessments. But and there is an issue with that. There every like in my view, eighty percent of them looked at the guidance does it address challenge question and answer is this and in the assessments they say this is a good proposal because it addresses challenge question <laughs> this is not assessing this is observing and and, not, and they go through this checklist and they say it's pretty much yes or no or give or, or make it as a sentence that yes Proposers did, did this, this, or this, or proposers did, did, not, did not do this, this, or this. I, in my mind, it's two different things as assessing or, or looking through or like doing the checklist thing. So, yeah, I, but this is just my opinion. I, I'm very, I would be very strict veteran community advisor who looks at these things and pretty much filters out all of that because. I want the community advisors also to learn from proposals, give insight or help the proposers themselves because as, as we continue help each other, we, we strive to be going further. Uh, and, but just observing is, is, is just keeps us stagnated and doesn't like not really move forward. And I feel like if we want to innovate, we need to push things forward. Okay, so just for clarity, Tevo, um, what are you expecting to get out of this conversation from the circle itself? I heard a couple of things. One is the CA questions are closed 
um, they could be answered with a yes or no. So maybe we need an open-ended question, like, why do you think this is feasible? Why do you think this is vulnerable? And the other is something around looking at five and fours instead of the other stuff. Is it, what do you, yeah, just for clarity for the people to jump in. So in the cutter circle, while I bring it up, I think this is a problem that we have uh, in, in high amount of assessments, but a lot of them are just observations or just um, checklisting, uh, but not assess uh, themselves. And yeah, just agreement that you see the same thing or some techniques you, you suggest for the veteran community advisors who are now faced with these kinds of issue. Um, just censoring yeah. <laughs> the, the issue right now, not uh, really asking for solutions because I think solutions would just have to come from. Yeah, so the, I'll just say as the CA rep that this is the kinds of things that I plan to dive into next month. Um, you know, in terms of this month, I was mostly focused on just supporting the current process. Um, and then um, we're gonna have a meeting specifically on feedback about the process and, you know, how the current, you know what people think about it and where suggestions are for improvement and and i i think that over the year there's been tremendous improvement in in the process and and we're you know we're getting high quality proposals we're getting high quality reviews but there's also a lot of problems that still need to be solved you know so we we definitely have you know problems in each of those areas too um but I, I won't try to dive into it today, given um, short time on this meeting and the plan to have a focused meeting on this issue uh, in a couple of weeks. Stephen, you wanted to say something? Yeah, I was, I was just, I think I'll reserve my comments for more detailed meeting too, just so we can move on. Okay. Um, does that more detailed meeting solve your need for today, Tivo? Yeah, no. mainly it was just to <laughs> highlight the concern, what's happening right now, and yeah, and if somebody has something to add. Then... All right, okay. looks like we have a takeaway for that. Um, next one, which one of the two do you want to look at? Ah, we'll yeah, so since I didn't know how the announcements works, I kind of went over the mapping the journey. I hopefully uh, Jonathan added these links and everybody else looking <laughs> feedback from you too, including myself. Um, but the last, uh, I think, I'm not, no, I, I guess let's Alison and decide does she want to, discuss about website or we should go over the proposal progress. Yeah, we'll skip the website. We can talk about that in Slack. Okay. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> um, yeah. So I'm <laughs> just opening that up. Should we share screen? Or, go for it, go for it, Tiva. Well, I, I, I will say, you know, I, we've, we've talked a lot about this topic and I want to keep talking about it. I'm, I'm probably not going to be able to stay on much past that, the official end time of the meeting though, just to throw that out there. Okay. Let's try to wrap this up and if really quickly mm -hmm. or go through it fast. Um, I don't know, I didn't actually really think about how to present it. Um, starting from the last comment, I guess, uh, sponsorship of community proposals. So we thought of a progress, um, how do we even get the proposals? Uh, what do we promote? Like first ask community for list of proposals and then individual CC members select the proposals and they read and assess them ask the questions whether it improves the catalyst process, uh, and then what challenges the community would like to support and are most important. So we have like challenge proposals we look into, and if it's an individual 
proposal, then we, we need to know is does it improve the catalyst process? So we, we are not like doing, uh, we are not making taps or like DeFi or some, these kinds of things we're looking at, but just to improve the ecosystem where we know it. And then, take, then once we have selected with these requirements, I think we actually wrote down some, uh, yeah, in, in the previous comment, we wrote down some kind of requirements. Um, I think we should, <laughs> I don't know, do we, do we read through it and have a consensus? But yeah, once we have like list selected them, we take it to the sync circle. Uh, and, but before uh, there was a, another um, requirement that these proposals have to have 4.2 um, collective star rating. So this means community also approves the fact that these proposals are required, like good enough. So we can make the selection beforehand, but before we actually start promoting them, it would happen then after veteran com community advisor stage, which would be next week, but it doesn't mean we have to rush. And, and now like what we ended up is what kind of assessments as a circle we should give to these uh, promoted proposals before we vote on it. So it's a continuation from what we previously talked about where we just collect from what proposals we have and start voting on it, but now adding more layers of involving the community and the requirements of what we actually even select as a proposal because there is thousands and there is going to be more and more of these. Yeah, so I mean, just maybe to give the high level, take a step back and explain how we got there. You mentioned this, Tivo, but the question was, what are circle sponsored proposals? And as Steven, Tivo, and I were trying to define that, there are some proposals that we have out there that build infrastructure for the circle. And then TiVo had proposed, and all of those were authored by somebody in the circle, the admin team, a circle rep, IOG. Um, TiVo had proposed that we also solicit or get proposals from the community that the circle would similarly promote so that it's more fair, if Tivo, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but that we're not just promoting our own proposals, but we're also promoting proposals that come from the community. And my my only feedback to that, I think it's a, a really interesting idea, but I think there's a lot of structure that needs to be built around that so that it is truly fair, because I'm very sensitive to this idea of popularity contest that has come up um, a couple of times in, in conversations that I've had. So I think what what TiVo and Steven were starting to build there was the structure that the circle would have if we wanted to do take the step of sponsoring proposals that are coming from the community. How would we do that in a fair and transparent manner? So um, just real quick. So um, by sponsoring, you know, is that us mentioning that in town hall? Is that us promoting uh, downstream to our channels? Um, you know, that, that's something I, I think we, we do need to kind of discuss. I, I think I, having- um, Yeah, I totally agree. That's an open question. That is another thing that would need to be defined as part of this process. Yeah. In I, my memory, I rem remember that one of the way to promote is to put it as um, like a slides to the town hall, uh, collect all of this, what we promote. And if we have this kind of better process or like like vigorous process that is not just some random selecting but with requirements and with voting and with the community involved then it, it would give more um oomph to the proposals what was promoted and, and maybe the concept of endorsement kind of comes in to me it's like okay this is a, a community endorsed proposal um you know that can came through the channels um, sponsored uh, might have a different meaning. Um, and that might be something that like, hey, we want to keep the developer ecosystem alive. And so we're going to really, you know, hope that the community votes for this. 
because we want to we need to keep those tools being developed and things like that so that there might be some things the other thing is timing um so when, you know when we first kicked off our circle we had to furiously get proposals out so i do think that we should slate our meetings in accordance to when these deadlines happen um, so having that visibility of future dates, I think, is something we really should address in the next circle to make sure that there's enough time to do any of this feedback um, to include the community, which I totally agree with. And I'm, I'm, uh, I really like the process you guys have come up with. Uh, but we, we need to kind of make some definitions and assessments on how we want to do that. Does it make sense to Something. make this a card that we track? Because um, it looks like we do have some process and it would fit into that getting feedback from the community and moving it through the different stages. That's important. I would, yeah, I would love to see it as a card. I think my main concern with this though is, does the community want us to, to sponsor their proposals? <laughs> and it's like, the whole point of Catalyst Circle was to sense problems from the community. And it still feels a little bit, a bit like assuming the problem a little bit, you know? So but I do support it being, a card to examine these issues, maybe even higher level, just saying, what is the relationship of capitalist circle to proposals? <laughs> yeah, maybe that, maybe at that level, and then where you can break it down that way. Yeah, totally agree with that. Yeah. Well said, it, it seems like a nice addition to, you know, every voter can ev evaluate proposals. And then you also get the feedback from all the, um, CAs. Uh, and this might be a nice addition, you know, provide some more information for voters, but there do need to be significant constraints, you know, on terms of how it's implemented to be make sure that it's fair and representative of the community, but it's sort of expressing sort of this is the circle's opinion about some high quality proposals. Thanks, Henrik. It does look like this can be a card. So let's take that as an action item and then continue to progress it through. We're at time. So um, our next meeting is January 6th. Um, is that okay with everybody? Um, yes. Yeah. Awesome. Um, well, we're not meeting at New Year's Eve at 11 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> we could, but. I did mention another channel that the circle is pretty hardcore because this is the, the last meeting of the year that I'm in because um, we keep going through it. Um, so happy holidays, everybody. Um, there is a form to fill out um, to get some feedback on how the meeting went. I do apologize for being late myself. So I'll, I'll take that as feedback to be on time next time. Um, and I appreciate your participation in 2021 and look forward to all the great stuff in 2022. Um, yeah, great. Thanks, Thank everyone. you, everyone. All right. Happy holidays. Happy, Happy New holidays. Year. Yeah. Hi, guys. Hi. I'll Looking share forward the to starting, starting the new year with you guys. Oh, <laughs> yes. Happy Thanks. New Year. Cut, I celebrate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very good. Great to see you all. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Hi, guys. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.